Chapter 20 Tick, tick, tick. Shh. Finn leaned against the back of the folding chair. The backyard was awash in warm afternoon sunlight. He tilted his head up to the sky and closed his eyes. Tick, tick, tick. Shh. Several houses away, a lawnmower droned. The smell of fresh-cut grass drifted in the air. He was tired. The kind of deep, bone-weary tired you get when you haven't slept in days. It was taking a toll on his body. A weird sense of detachment, almost like a cloudy force field between him and the others, was creeping in. Eager to get back on the road, Finn was not happy with all the delays. Yes, the shower was great, and the clean clothes, a bonus. But enough of this. They needed to get going. They had a job to do, and all this lounging around was getting in the way. He wanted this whole business behind him. To make things worse, River was becoming more enthralled with Beth by the moment. It was written all over her face. He did not want another person tagging along, let alone one as clueless as Beth. He had to get everyone back on the same page. Finn sat up and looked around at his friends. Anybody check when the next train heading south is coming through? I hadn't bothered checking with Porter yet, replied Teague. Don't you think we should? We've been here long enough. Teague cocked an eyebrow. It's only been one night. I think it's a little soon to say we're off schedule. That was condescending as fuck, he thought. Frustration welled up inside him. Looking around at the others, they were all paying attention. Yet no one spoke up. Trying to conceal his irritation, Finn replied. One night can be too many. Do we even know how long they'll store the remains at the mortuary? For all we know, they could have already gotten rid of them. Teague sighed, as if he were talking to a child. Then I suppose we're already too late then, aren't we? Finn pinched his eyes closed and rubbed his head. This was going nowhere. There was a low buzzing sound in his head. Look, Finn, said Teague. His tone was less condescending, more intimate this time. I realize you want to get this over with. We all do. But we had a bad start. It's been one thing after another. Maybe a little break is in order, so we can relax and become whole again. I doubt the county has done anything with the remains yet. One more day ain't gonna hurt anything. One more day? shouted Finn. What the hell do you mean, one more day? This time River chimed in. He means we should stick around for one more night, then head out fresh tomorrow. Don't take this the wrong way, but it looks like you, more than any of us, could use a little downtime. Christ, there it is. They already decided, he thought. Without even consulting him, they decided they would push this whole nightmare out even longer. Of course they did. This was just another trip for them. No big deal. They probably don't even care if they get the ashes or not. The buzzing gave way to a high-pitched whine. So that's it, then, he glared at Teague. Y'all have decided we're staying another night. Any other decisions I should know about? Teague shook his head. Don't go there. No one is plotting against you. The fact that your mind went there only proves you're not thinking right. C'est bête. Did he just call me stupid? Finn was ready to go off. He opened his mouth. River placed her hand on his arm. Look, baby, we all need more rest to recover. First the storm, then Cyrus and Craig, followed by you damn near getting yourself killed? We're all a little run down. Some of us more than others. She flashed a sweet smile at him. One more night. We can relax today, then get a good night's sleep and head out tomorrow. We need this. You need this too. His thoughts whirled. Was he overreacting? Was he exhausted and not thinking right? Was he being stupid? No. He was trying to stay on task. Was she hinting that I'm the reason they want to lounge around for another day? Bullshit. This isn't about me. This is about her wanting to play with her new pet, Beth. And what the hell is Teague up to? Finn rubbed his head, then looked down at his feet. His body tingled with weakness. His head hurt. Teague placed his hand on his shoulder. Maybe one more day to rest would be a good thing. Finn caved. You win. Y'all are probably right. We can head out tomorrow. Finn could feel the tension dissipate. His body relaxed. The whining in his head stopped. He leaned back against the chair, closed his eyes, and listened to the sprinkler again. Tick, tick, tick. Shh. On another note, said River, Beth is nice. Finn didn't open his eyes. He knew she was looking at him. Yeah, I like her, replied Cash. Of course he's going to kiss her ass. River chuckled. Well, for once, I can say thank you. Finn, if you hadn't gotten hurt, we wouldn't have ended up here. And we wouldn't have met Beth. Finn opened his eyes and leaned forward. Wow, 
he replied. Next time I get my skull nearly broken, I'll be sure to remember it ain't all bad. At least River will be able to make a new friend now. Cash chuckled. The way you are, that will probably be in a day or two. This caused the others to laugh and tease him. He shook his head. Y'all are assholes sometimes. The back door swung open. Fresh from her own shower, Beth came outside to join them. Seeing everyone laughing, she asked, What did I miss? Cash pointed at Finn. Just poking fun at Finn. Same old, same old. Here we go, thought Finn. For a fleeting moment, he considered getting up and walking away. He looked at Beth. I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, uh uh-huh, said Cash, smirking. Man, I love you like a brother. So believe me when I say, you either got a death wish or your judgment is garbage. Maybe you're just plain insane. What is it you say, Teague? C'est fou. Laughter. Finn shook his head. Wow, that's savage. Nah, man, I'm going to agree with Cash on this one, said Teague. You've come up with some asinine ideas. Don't believe them. They're all talking shit. Dude, come on, said Cash. Some of the most terrifying moments of my life. No, scratch that. All of the most terrifying moments of my life. Followed you saying the words, I got an idea. I'm going to go with Cash on this one, man, added Zach. When you say, you got an idea, it always ends up with something crazy happening. Finn racked his brain to find a memory to prove they were wrong. He couldn't find one. Hey, said Finn, my ideas always work out. Maybe not in the exact way originally intended. I'll give you that. But they do work out, right? He looked over at Teague for backup. Teague smiled and wagged his head slowly from side to side. I ain't so sure you could say things work out. Most times, it's more like things go wrong, like horribly wrong, and then we're all just doing what we need to in order to get through it alive, or in one piece. Finn bowed his head in mock defeat. Teague wrapped his arm around his shoulder and kissed him on the side of his head. Finn relaxed and leaned against him. Laughing along with the others, Beth asked, All the times you could have gotten hurt or died, don't y'all ever want to stop? Stop, asked River. The laughter died down. Everyone listened. Beth shrugged. I don't know. Stop traveling. Settle down. Maybe have a home? Okay, it all sounds stupid coming out of my mouth right now. A home? Asked Finn, his tone mocking. He leaned forward in his chair. What do you think makes up a home? Are you talking about a building filled with a bunch of shit you don't need? Beth blinked. She looked like a deer caught in the headlights of a car. She shrugged. A home is a lot more than just things you put in it. Yeah? Asked Finn. Like what? Family. Being with people you love. Safety. Security. Replied Beth. My family travels with me. He nodded at Teague. Safety and security from what exactly? What are you so scared of? I don't know, admitted Beth. The world can be a pretty harsh place. Home can be just as harsh, he snapped. Beth nodded. Finn scoffed. Safety is a bullshit fairy tale. It's a carrot they dangle in front of you to keep you in line. Beth stared. He realized she was uneasy with the way the conversation had gone. Too bad she brought it up. The pain in his head returned. You know we're all going to die one day, right? He said. Nothing you can do to change that. Finn looked around at the others. I think we're all pretty much of the mindset that we'd rather live life on our terms. Even if it means that sometimes we're not safe. Do you ever worry about getting into trouble for living how you do? She asked. In trouble with who? He demanded. No one's paying attention. Here's a little hard truth for you, Beth. The rules only apply to the fools who choose to follow them. The rest of us do what we want, and nobody does a goddamn thing about it. Irritation bubbled up inside him again. He looked down at his feet. The buzzing in his head was back. Y'all are brave, whispered Beth. Brave? asked Teague. Yeah, I mean, you packed up and left without being afraid of anything, replied Beth. I wouldn't say we weren't afraid of anything, responded Teague. I mean, yeah, we left behind everything we knew. But trust me, it wasn't because any of us were fearless. Some of us had nothing to stick around for. Beth nodded. Zack interrupted. I didn't have to leave. I could have stayed where I was and waited till I aged out of the system. Though I probably would have been homeless after that anyway. He shrugged. Cash chimed in. I'm pretty sure if I stayed in Spokane... I would be well on my way to dying of liver failure or drug overdose. There was nothing there for me anymore. River sighed. I, for one, am glad Dawn decided for me. I love this family. I wouldn't trade it for the world. 
Those last words had such a sad tone to them. River hardly ever spoke of her sister. When she did, there was always an undertone of deep sorrow, of a loss so profound she could never be whole again. Her sister left behind an empty void, a void she might look to fill with Beth. Finn glared at Beth. He gave Teague a quick nudge, then stood up and said, I'm bored, let's get out of here and do something.